uh, Fishaholics, welcome back to another episode. Just pulled the kayak up on this beach here and uh, I think we're gonna try doing uh, some fishing with some artificials for possibly some snook along this area. It's uh, the end of the outgoing tide so uh, we had the tide push us kind of to this spot uh, from where we launched and uh, basically gonna fish the rest of the outgoing which is just like an hour or so and um, then once the tide turns around i'll fish probably like three quarters of the incoming and then catch the very end of it uh, back to the launch and other than uh, trying to catch some snook along this beach on say little swim baits or like little soft plastic shrimp uh, being that the tide is so low right now i'm hoping that uh, we can catch uh, some crabs by uh, digging around some of the rocks that are along this uh, stretch of beach and then we can use those crabs to possibly catch uh, some snappers or some sheep's head on the way back to the launch so we can also catch our dinner for tonight which would be great which would be great because who doesn't love fresh fish but uh, anyway let's uh, quit blabbing we do have some stormy weather a little bit uh, further west there but it looks like it's moving northeast so I, I hope it kind of stays moving that way and uh, we've got a nice clear patch of uh, sky above us and we just catch fish and get our hands wet but don't get our whole body soaked so anyway stay tuned let's uh, see if we can catch some fish Perfect. Look at these guys. Wow, look at all these uh, little hermit crabs. And they've got some crabs hanging out right near them. Well, check out this little lobster I just found. Pretty cool. All right, pretty sweet. We got a couple dozen crabs real quick. And uh, now let's uh, just grab the rods and uh, head down the beach. All right, so as I'm walking down the beach, I'm not gonna move too quick. I'm gonna move real slow and stealthy and try and see if uh, I can see any fish in the shallows. If not, then uh, I'll probably start casting out and working the uh, the edge where it drops off but uh i think that they'll they should there should be some fish that we might be able to sight cast just spotted a couple snook right here i'm gonna try within this little salt strong um, power prawn at them i'm gonna give it a good coating of some dr juice and by the way, if you want to get a free bottle of this, just click the link in the description. And all you do is literally have to pay for the shipping and Salt Strong will send you out a free bottle. And if you're interested in these little power prawns, I'll put the link down in the description as well. But uh, of course, let's first see if it works and catches fish. This one right here. I'm going to cast a little bit past him and then give him a leading cast. Oh, he's looking at it. There he is. First cast, yes. It's not a giant, but uh, it's just so fun, especially when you can sight cast them like that. And it's super fun with uh, light tackle like this too. There we go. Healthy little fish. Looks like something tried to grab him right there. Maybe a big cuda. <laughs> Let's get him back. Whoa, he's popping his mouth. There he goes. And what I was doing after I cast it out there is I was just basically uh, hopping it like this along the sand, really subtly getting that tail to quiver. And that's what really uh, engaged him and uh, made him bite. And we got frayed up there a little bit, so. I'm gonna break out my new sword pliers. Check these badass pliers out. Just uh, got them from Sword, and uh, if you want to check them out, I'll put a link in the description. So uh, the two setups that I'm using today are very similar. Both are the seven foot six dark matter fishaholic inshore series spinning rods. But uh, the first setup that we use to catch that first fish is paired with the 4000 dial or Tate. This has 10 pound green moss power pro braid on it and a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then this setup is the VR51 with 15 pound green moss power pro braid. And uh, being that I knew I wanted to throw this one with shads or swim baits, uh, I put a 40 pound leader. So uh, 
something just a little bit heavier in case we hook a larger fish on this rod. And uh, yeah, most of the fish we hook in today, no matter the size, it's gonna be really fun with this light tackle stuff. All right, I'm gonna try taking a couple casts here with the four inch Fishaholic Finback Shad. Oh, there's fish. Wow. A little Jack Creval. Got a couple fish right here. I'm gonna throw the shad at them. There he is. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he jumped onto the shore. All right, let's see if we can keep it going. Get a few more fish. I see another snook right here, but smaller. I'm gonna throw the power prawn at him. Didn't want it. I'm gonna throw it a little bit closer to the edge where I can't see if there's any fish and try. There's a fish on the shad. That was crazy, the bait was sitting on the bottom for a long time and then I just picked it up and started swimming it. And this guy was there to crush it. Oh, it's a better one. Sweet. Awesome. That's a good quality snook for the light tackle. I got my new little waterproof uh, measuring tape, so we'll give them a quick measure. About 27. Oh. Sweet. So we got to beat 27 today. All right, let's put on some more Dr. Juice. And then. I'm gonna whip this bait out there again and uh, try fishing the deeper water because that's where we got that 27 incher. Oh gosh, what? Oh, this might be a jack ball. It's definitely not a snook. It would have probably come closer to the surface if it was. And it also has like the, the feeling of a jack creval. Yeah, it's a little jack. Oh, he just popped off right there. When I felt the thump for a sec, I was real excited. Like, oh man, this could be a big snook. But uh, the way it was swimming, I was pretty certain it wasn't. Oh, and I got one right here. The little guy cruising right in front of me. Doesn't look like he's seen me yet. I'm gonna crank this in, see if we can get him to eat. Nope. <laughs> Looks like the tide just about started coming in, which is good. And I think I just saw some bigger snook right on the edge cruising. Like I saw like some really big, long, dark shadows. Whoa, fish on. Oh, oh, quick release. <laughs> Look at him. He's just sitting there like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> that was funny. Oh, 
There's another snook. Oh, look at that big stingray right there. There's one. Oh, gosh. They love to go flying when you hook them out there. All right, pretty sweet. Let's keep it going. What amazes me is uh, we're getting our bites out there near the bottom, probably like 10 or 15 feet because I'm counting it down and it takes like 10 to 20 seconds to get to the bottom. So it's not shallow. And uh, you hook the fish and like two, three seconds later, they're on the surface flying out of the water. All right, well, I'm gonna start uh, working my way back towards the kayak because uh, this tide is coming up and uh, I'm not really sure uh, how close the water is to the kayak now. So I don't want the tide coming up and washing the kayak away. So I figured we'd go back, take a look and have a snack and then kind of reconvene and figure out what else we want to do from there. There he is. Let's see if I can do that again and get his buddy. There he is, oh my gosh. What's cool about like this little rip that's right here is it's actually a back current because like the tide is coming in out there, but it's hitting the bend in the beach and it's swinging back around and the, and the current right here in front of me is going this way. So the snooker staging like right here facing that way. All right, uh, well, we're back at the kayak and decent little bite uh, here in this area. Uh, you know, we caught a lot of fish fairly easily and uh, now you can notice uh, the tide is quite a bit higher than when we first got here, so uh, it's flooding in nicely. And I think we should take this opportunity to uh, start working our way back to the launch. And about halfway back, we'll probably hit like one or two more spots for snook. And then once we get like three quarters of the way back, uh, there's a stretch of docks that I think uh, should yield some uh, uh, sheep's head or mangrove snapper on the crab. So let's hop in the kayak and get out there and uh, see if we can catch some more fish. All right, let's try a few casts right along here. This wood structure in the water is usually a magnet for some snook. Oh gosh, no man, big fish, just crushed the shad. Oh no, stay out of there, stay away from the structure. Oh gosh, this is gonna be real lucky if we land this fish, I think. You know, or he's gonna cut us off. Nice snook on the little four inch fishaholic finback shad. I'm playing them real light right now. I'm real surprised we actually got a bite from a big fish. This looks like an upper slot.
today was the day I should have brought my net. Oh, look at that. Nice fish. Oh, yeah. Crush the little four inch. Sweet. Look at this girthy snook. Zero's right on the bottom jaw there. Wow, look how split up her tail is just from probably being net so many times. And uh, right there is 30 inches. So this fish is probably like two, two and a half inches past that. So I would say it's uh, like 32 and a half, maybe even 33, 35 is right there. So if you pinch the tail, it's uh, you know getting close to being 33. Sweet. There she goes. Whew, let's go, baby. I was, I'm so pumped about that catch because I was not expecting it. So that makes it just that much better. And uh, just on the little four inch olive over white and silver flake, dark matter, fishaholic finback shad on a three eighths ounce tri jig head. And look at what he did to my 40 pound leader. He frayed it up pretty good, but mm, I'm pulling on it hard and it's not breaking. So we played that fish perfect and we also hooked him perfect and uh, we got him in the boat. Let's uh, retie and uh, keep on throwing the shad because uh, we've still got like probably a half a mile until uh, we get to the spot where we'll dunk some crabs. So uh, the next little bit of structure we got coming up is uh, this big like rock wall that's uh, like underwater fenced together and uh, generally holds uh, quite a few fish because it's great structure and it also drops off to like deeper water and on an outgoing or incoming tide there's always current pushing by here so it's a great ambush point for predator species oh there was a good bite something whacked it on the drop there's a fish Oh, he's got some good weight to him. What could we have here? Oh man, it's a ripping line. What do we have here? What the? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna play this fish real light. Could be a giant snook or maybe a grouper. I've hooked small groupers along here. It's got a big head, whatever it is. Oh man, I'm gonna play this fish super light and just see what happens. Hopefully we can at least get it near the surface to get a look at it. I'm basically reeling myself to the fish right now. heavy dang almost had him up right there please don't cut me off oh man I just want to get a look at it Oh yeah, another big snook on the vertical jig too. Nice. They're loving the little four inch today. It's absolutely slaying them. All right, take a look at this one. What a big mama stud right there. Whew get a measure on her and get her back okay this one's definitely gonna be over slot oh 
wow, probably at least an inch and a half to two inches over 35. So I would say like 36 and a half, 37 inches. All right, so I'm just giving her a little tow to give her some fresh seawater and oxygen flowing over her gills. And uh, the current pushed me in way a ways from where we caught her. So uh, I just moved in shallow here now and I'm gonna drop her off so she doesn't become shark food or dolphin food. Here she goes. She's staying on the surface. What are you doing, baby? All right, well, she swam off and uh, it's only like a foot and a half of water right here. So uh, much safer than uh, dropping her out in the middle of the intercoastal right there in uh, 30 feet of water. And I also was marking like some really big stuff suspended under the kayak uh, right after I caught that fish. So uh, I started thinking like, okay, there could be some dolphins or sharks, you know, underneath me waiting for me to release that fish. So uh, I gave her the best chance by putting her in shallow and uh, watching her swim away. So uh, I'm now content with uh, the two nice, uh, sl well, big slot and over slot uh, size snook that we caught. Uh, and on the light tackle on the uh, dark pattern four inch fish hog from back shad. Man, they're loving that bait today. And uh, I think now we should just go uh, hit some docks and see if we can uh, catch ourselves some dinner. So I'll see you there. All right, so I'm gonna take off the power prawn. and tie on one of these little jig heads. And now let's grab our crabs. I think this one will be perfect. All right, I haven't been to this spot in a while, but hopefully there's still fish that hang on this structure. Well, not a single fish. And uh, we hit like six or seven docks along here and it's been probably like 45 minutes to an hour and I, I can't believe we didn't get one sheep's head. And I'm um, not surprised we didn't get any snapper. I think I did have some little snapper bites, but uh, ideally, you know, a live shrimp or a piece of shrimp would have worked best for them or maybe like a small mahara or like a little greenie or something. But I'm just really surprised we didn't get at least one sheep's head and uh, I haven't fished along this dock stretch uh, probably in like two or three months. So, um, you know, maybe it's just too warm here and they're not in this area. But uh, back where we were getting uh, snook uh, earlier on the beach, uh, I did see quite a few sheep's head swimming around there in like a foot and a half of water, kind of like right next to the snook and they were just foraging on the bottom. So uh, go figure, I probably could have just went back to the kayak, grabbed more grab crabs and, and walked up the beach and uh, probably could have caught some that way. But uh, maybe then we wouldn't have caught those two nice snook either. So I, I much rather would have caught those two nice snook. So I'm glad uh, we did what we did and uh, it kind of just worked out in the end. And uh, I guess instead of fresh fish for tonight, uh, uh, maybe we'll get like Chinese food and feel bad about it tomorrow, but then I'm gonna spend all day uh, in the boat uh, tomorrow. Like I wanna fish like sun up to sundown and just fish inshore. And I wanna test out my new uh, lithium ion phosphate um, batteries uh, with the um, trolling motor. And uh, I wanna just see if it can go all day long. And they're 100 amp hour batteries and I have three of them because I have a 36 volt uh, electric trolling motor. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe we can get on uh, you know, some big snook, uh, big tarpon, big jack or vol. And uh, also uh, I'll take the crabs that we caught today out there as well. Maybe we can get some dinner tomorrow uh, or uh, you know, if we catch uh, some little greenies or maharas uh, in the cast net, you know, trying to catch bigger bait for the other stuff, then we can use the smaller bait to catch uh, some nice mangroves for the table tomorrow. So um, yeah, it'll work out you know but uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I will put all my tackling equipment down below in the description and until the next video like always live to fish fish to live